magical. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to that Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here. Please tell me we're recording. Yes, we are. Pedal jams. Not bad. Lovely. There were some noises there. I've already got a favourite. Yeah. Really, very cool. Anyway, okay. Yeah, welcome to Pedal Jams, where we take four pedals that are new to us. Not necessarily new, but new to us anyway. Yes. Yeah, so pedals this week are uh, the Cornerstone Gladio double preamp. We have the Acclam Dr. Robert. We have the Walrus Audio. Is it slow or slew? And we have the New Neighbour Inspire. Tri-chorus. Ah, it's the tri-chorus. Plus. It's the New Neighbour Inspire tri-chorus plus, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I've okay. seen one that looks a bit different, so I don't know if they've changed the graphics since we received ours. Okay. Anyway, it matters not, Daniel. Do you think this is slew? Because it's got an umlaut? Is that what you call slew gin? Because <laughs> it's spelled the same, isn't it? Yeah. Because that's when you go to the bar, I have slew. <laughs> slew gin. <laughs> we get more and more like Morecambe and Wise every week, mate. More Morecambe, less wise. <laughs> nice. Like that? That's a, that's a, uh, I always say, um, more Eric, less Ernest. Oh, okay. Which means the same thing. Very good. Doesn't it? We're, we're growing together in unique and we are. Uh, unsettling ways. We are. You're all invited to the wedding. Um, our wives included. Yeah, wives included. Uh, right. So, Cornerstone Gladio. Right, I stumbled on this, Dan. Mm. Almost literally, my friend Ian came to see me. And uh, we had some other business to conduct. And oh, the, Ian. Yeah, Ian from Guitar Breaks. And then, hello, and mention to Guitar Breaks. If you don't know what Guitar Breaks is, check out guitarbreaks.com, which is a, uh, it's a place where you can go on holiday and immerse yourself in guitars, and people like me and Dan hang out with you for the week. We went to Italy. We all hang out together is a better way to put yeah. it. Yeah, but, but, you, but he's... You know, we were in Italy uh, in just the most divine part of the world and eat amazing food and hang out with like-minded people and just yeah. play guitar and learn stuff. And it's just, yeah, really, really wonderful stuff. And in addition to me and Dan, Ian gets some really serious people to do <laughs> to do courses. We serve the drinks. Yeah, yeah. Like really serious people like Josh Smith and Matt Schofield. Mm. And, uh, yeah. Ariel. And, Ariel, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Danish Pete. They, and we are the, the Danish Pete. That was that was an yeah, awesome week. It's it great. So it's good. all good. Anyway, guitarbreaks.com. Anyway, not connected other than he brought me this pedal. And you know, when a mate of yours comes to visit and says, I've got this overdrive pedal you should check out and a little bit of you dies inside. Because That's why I have nothing left inside. Every person and their animal of choice makes an overdrive pedal. Mm -hmm. And then he says, Oh, and it's a bit dumbbell inspired. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Um I kind of, you know, and I thought, well, it looks nice and the knobs are nice. So, yeah, I'll plug it in. And I plugged it in and I was like, okay. Yeah. Okay, this it's is pretty serious. serious. This thing. Yeah. So, um, with all due respect um, to Emilio and Linda, who make these over there in Italy, um, it's a two-sided, they call it a preamp. Okay. Um, one side, inspired by the, the dumbbell sounds of your Eric Johnson's, your Robin Ford's, your Sonny Landreth's. Okay. So, it's that world. Right. One side is designed to be smoother, slightly more compressed, thicker and fuller. The other side, a bit more aggressive, harder clipped. Okay. Before we get into it, I should just say there are versions one and two. Right. This is version one. Okay. Um, I don't know what... The version two is slightly different in that it, the two sides are more similar, and it might be that they both are available to buy. Okay. This is version one. Okay. Okay. Um, Oh, Amps today, uh, we've got the, you bought the Hughes and Kettner out, which which warms my heart. It's been Hughes and Kettner Pure Tone. It's just been sat there on the shelf for a year or more. I was like, we never use that. Let's get it out and use it. It's a hand-wired EL, well, predominantly hand-wired EL 34 amp in the Marshall vein. Not much like anything else Hughes and Kettner's ever made before. And it has two blue lights in the in the front, one of which I have broken. Oh, okay. When I was taking the chassis out to do right. something. Yeah. Okay, and uh, Dan's matchless Ace HC30 with the matchless cab.
That is glorious. I'm going home. That is so good. Thick gain. Yeah. And that's with the gain down low with, I, I don't know if it's the amp doing it or if it's the pedal, but when I plugged it into my two rock, I was hearing the same thing. It's got like a sizzly, quite a gritty texture mm. on top, which is just really nice. Let's get a bit more gain. Let's see where we are. <laughs> So the weird thing for me is I find that really comfortable to play, no reverb delay. Bonkers, isn't it? Um, that I mean, is gorgeous. Anyone familiar with the Dumble Overdrive Special Overdrive Special Amplifier? Nobody is familiar with Dumble, Dumble Overdrive Special Amplifiers other than people that have owned them, and they are few and far between. Incidentally, there's one for sale this week at Carter Vintage Guitars for a cool $150,000. Owned. Oh, it's dollars. That's okay. Dollars is okay. Right. Yeah. Owned by um, Eric. Uh, no, owned by John Mayer, Keith Urban, and somebody else who isn't as well known for their dumbbells. Tremonti. Actually, yeah, he is pretty well known for his dumbbells. Okay. So, mm, hundred fifty. They keep trying to move it on. All these famous. People. I know. It must be rubbish, mustn't it? Anyway, um, the people that are familiar with that amplifier will know it has a jazz and rock switch on it. What does that do? Which you heard there, here you go. Just in case, you, <laughs> just in case you didn't get that from Dan's awesome demonstration, it rolls a load of high end off. I'm sorry, it was very silly. And in so doing, I'm guessing it must be pre-game. I'm guessing it's pre-game because it seems to take a lot of the aggression out of the overdrive as well. Okay. So anyway, the same as in the Dumbles and uh, and Dumble inspired amps. I guess if you're going for a really smooth, fluty with loads of gain tone, the jazz might work. I'll get some humbuckers out in a minute and we'll have a listen to that. Okay. All right, so that's channel one. Yep. Channel two. That's really serious. Really, really serious, isn't mm. it? So channel two is definitely harder sounding. It also gives you this um, different uh, compression, which I'm assuming is a diode thing. Right. One of them feels a bit more buttery and the other one feels a little less. Uh, here you go. Have a listen. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So, Blimey. pretty, pretty cool. What I really like about it is there's loads of overdrive, but it still retains a kind of aggression. Right. In the top. Mm. So it still feels like an amp to me, or it feels more like an amp. And that you mean? In that this side is kind of smooth, which is really nice and it's easy to play and buttery on the fingers. This side is like, okay, now I'm now I'm off the leash. Mm -hmm. Can you just give me a little bit of reverb? We can dial in a small amount of reverb. Yep. Very serious. Really, 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 really serious. Mm. Absolutely up there with yeah. any other overdrive I have ever played, for me personally. Mm. I don't know what it is. It feels ampy. So it's super um, like dynamic mm. under the fingers, mm. easy to play. What you said earlier with no reverb. Yeah. Was, finally, before we move on, sorry, we spent too long on it. Um, can I just hear the, I want to hear some low gain sounds with the telly mm -hmm. in channel two. Okay.
Blake and Eck, Blake and Eck. What I did there, just so you know, is I started on the lower gain setting on one, uh, side two. I then went to a lower gain setting on side one, and then I've got them both on now with low low gain. And so it's they're just, sort of stacking into each other. And it's super responsive, isn't it? Okay. Boy, oh boy. I think we'll be seeing more of that one. Yep. Funny, isn't it? Do you want to try my new overdrive pedal? Not really. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, that sounds terrible, but you know, there are a million overdrive pedals on the market. Yeah. Yes, so thank you, Emilio and Linda. Yeah, well done. Very cool. Well done. All right. Um, did you know, Dan? Tell me. Dick Denny did a hybrid amp in 1966. Dick Denny did. For Vox. Did it. Did it. Did Dick. Dick Denny. Dick Denny did. Dick Denny's dad's dog's <laughs> doing well. Yeah. Dawson. For those of you who don't know, Dick Denny was uh, the pioneering, in incredibly important figure at Vox Amplification. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, fast forward from the era-defining sounds of 1958 and 59 with the Vox AC15. We get to 1966, right? And there's an amp that I had literally never heard of before. Okay, is this the transistor amp? It is. It's called the U. L series. Is this the American app? Um, apparently Dick Denny designed it with a solid state pre and a valve power section in 1966. Okay. That are apparently all over Revolver. Yes. And Sergeant Peppers. Yep. This pedal mm -hmm. is based on the Vox UL730 serial number 3042. That's, that, that's, that's quite specific. And apparently there are only a few of them that remain in the world. Wow. Because a lot of them were junked. Right. Except not quite. Okay. Because then there's an added FET section to simulate the power valves overdriving because the preamp was pretty clean, apparently. Is that the Mark Schall setting? No. Okay. That's more again. Oh, okay. And you know what that means? More again? Mark Schall. Right. So there's the Beatles stood on stage Must in Hamburg. Schall. <laughs> Mark Schall! <laughs> So there's George and John and Ringo and Paul. Yeah. And Pete, actually. Was Pete around at that point? Anyway, whatever. Um, the Beatles stood on stage in Hamburg and apparently the Germans, because they used to stand there and just play static, mm -hmm. play songs. The Germans would shout at them, Mach schau, mach schau. Right. Make a show. Really? Be more interesting. No way. According okay. To, according to Wikipedia. Right. So anyway, that's what it is. So it's to simulate that particular Vox amp, which is all over Revolver and Sergeant Peppers. Okay, very cool. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't it be good if we had a strap very similar to the ones that George and... Ah, wouldn't it? Uh, wouldn't it just? George and John had in that period. For anyone who doesn't know, my strat is based on John and George's uh, 62 strats that they acquired in 64. Right. And my strat is a, a commemorative version thereof. So there you go. Uh, for... for John's was lost, possibly stolen from Abbey Road. Really? But definitely lost. George's ended up as Rocky, the one that's all painted psychedelic colours. Right, okay. Anyway, that's enough history. <sighs> and for anyone who doesn't know, Dr. Robert is a track on Revolver. Revolver's from a band called The Beatles. <laughs> I can't play any Beatles riffs because we'll get copyright struck, all right? So. Okay. So let's just make up tunes on the spot. Yeah. That are reminiscent. We could make one that goes. Beatles early. Ones. 
That Very would be like one, wouldn't it? Perfect. Let's just pretend it's a normal overdrive pedal, shall we, Dan? Okay. It's so hard to play the guitar when your when your head is in one place and yeah. your fingers are doing something else. Yeah, because what you're thinking, you're I'm thinking. trying to think about it and just going horribly badly wrong. Anyway, um, it's you know what? It's less uh, aggressive than I thought it was going to be. Right, go on. <laughs> Tell you what, it's real. Tell what, yeah, yeah. Tell, tell me what. Regardless of any Beatles connection, it's just a really great boost overdrive. A really, really, really great boost overdrive. I want to, I want to take, I want to hear the left hand side of the Gladio. Just before you do this side, no, this, left this side, yeah. left. I want to hear that just before we do. Has its own thing. It does. Uh, which is, it's definitely reminiscent of sounds you've heard. Mm. You know, it's really nice. Uh, in case anyone is wondering, there have been images of this pedal um, going about on 
uh, YouTube and Facebook and all uh, avenues of social media, these uh, gaps and things on the side are for a, uh, a pedal affixing platform that the guys from McClam have designed. Smart track. Smart track. Smart track fastening so system. That, yeah, that's what those things are for. They're not knobs or no. hidden features. There are, uh, yeah, so you put a screwdriver in there and you turn it and it attaches to whatever you want to screw it into. Yeah. Quite a nice feature. Yep. Um, there are three trimmers, two of which you can adjust based treble and one of which they ask you not to. Okay. Which is the balance of the FET, extra FET section. Right. I really like that. That's really cool. Uh, sorry, you, I, I cut you off mid-flow, Dan. You, well, wanted, I, you wanted to hear the left-hand side of the Gladio. Yeah, so if you play for me, and then I'm just going to... Yep. Yes. All right. Uh, yes. Sorry, that just took me back a bit there. That was nice. Couple of winners. Yeah. We're going way over time today, Dan. We are. We haven't jammed or anything yet. How no. are we doing? Where are we up to, Fraser? Oh, we're miles in. Are we half an hour in yet? Yeah. We are. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, then there's other two pedals. Okay. And let's jam. God. It's a good job they're not complex <laughs> pedals or anything, Dan. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, we had uh, Holt and Jason. Jason in from Walrus Audio uh, a little while ago, and they brought this with them, and we thought we'd have a, a bit of a better look. So this is the slow reverb. Or slow. Slow. Depending on if you want to put the umlaut in or not. A new version of reverb. It is for, Dan. Lush, modulated, sleepy, and ambient soundscapes. Ah, uh, okay. Uh... Or even soundscapes, yeah, soundscapes. Um, it's got three reverb algorithms, mm -hmm. and then it's got a. Uh, you can affect the wave of the reverb tail, so you can okay. have of the um, modulation, yeah, of the, different yeah. modulation. So, right. um, shall we? Sure. If you start with dark, okay, it's a good place for me. that then I'm, I'm totally lost how would you use an octave down reverb so if you're going to play a big sustaining chord right um but with some gain on it yeah. like you're literally playing then right but just big long sustaining chord so do you play just play the chord first and then i'll kick the reverb in okay Yeah, all right. 
yeah. that works. Yeah. Okay. Um, here, I'll you go for the rise reverb then. Okay. So this one, if I set the mix at 100%, I'll give it some nice lengthy decay. Auto swell. Auto swell. Very nice. The last one is a, a chord. So if you, I think if you play the chord and then you hit it, it sustains from the point where you hit it, I think. Right. Very nice. That's the first time I've ever done that. That's very nice. <laughs> and then it trails off when you when you turn it off again. Lovely. Really cool. Mm. And then what we didn't talk about was then in each of those three modes, you can affect the way the modulation happens. Yeah, the shape of the wave. Yeah. Can we just yeah. demonstrate that briefly? Okay. Which one do you like best? Oh, we'll just do the one that you did, and then I can yeah. just go, go through the different waveforms. Uh, that so, might be difficult on that one, because it will be... Okay. Just was it, well, hit oh, it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand forward. reverbs. Okay. You got a sine wave, then you got a warp, which is a a random thing of I think mixing between the sine waves and the uh, sync, which I can, which is like a sawtooth wave. So it's like eh, then up. Eh, yeah. Eh, yeah. Well, they say sine. They say warp is like uh, a warped record. So sine up and down. Um, warp is. 
pitch up. That's what they say. Okay. I promise that's what they say. Yep. And uh, sink is down. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. It's it's got to go back to the it's like it's yeah. It's got to get back to the starting point. Yeah. That's some anyway. But that, yeah, it's cool. I like it. I like. I think it. it goes up and then is back straight back down again. So it's up and then straight back down, or down and then straight back up. Yeah. That, yeah. Whereas the sign is smooth. Right. Okay. Right? So it's inverse. Yeah. So it's like a sawtooth wave and an inverse sawtooth wave. Nice. Um, yes. Uh, and um, one of the in all of the mo in the non hold mode. Yes. Hitting the sustain pedal gets you from wherever your uh, decay is set to maximum decay. Okay. The last thing is when it's in bypass mode, you can press and hold the on off switch for a momentary reverb. And then straight back to where you were. Right. So if you're doing a, if you're doing a, uh, a massive hero solo, Okay, that's cool. Fair enough. Yep. Um, yeah, ambiently textury, good fun. Good fun. Good clean fun. Uh, I think that's one of those pedals in that you've got to spend a few hours in and just find a couple of things that really work. Yeah. Particularly, I think, with that mix knob, mm. getting the ratio of your clean signal to the the reverb. Yeah, it's interesting. That it's like, it's not just 100%, 50%. Yeah. You know, it's, um, yeah, yeah, it's cool. And then the global tone control on all the repeats as well is really nice. Lovely. So you can get it to stand up and sparkle or just be low down and less obvious. I see, for the ambient people, that's going to be really nice. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Right, right. moving um, on. Yes, finally then, Inspire uh, Tri-Chorus Plus. Now, as we said at the top of the show, I think there's one out with different graphics, or it came out with different graphics, and these are the new graphics. don't know which way around it is. Okay. But it is, Daniel. Refer to the Sheet of Doom. Um, it's eight stereo chorus effects. Oh, wow. Um, and I believe we have the ability to go stereo. We do. Awesome. So from this point forward, Fraser will pan the guitars in stereo. Uh, at, all the way so far, you can kind of hear them ever so slightly left and right. Okay. And now they will be... Stereo. Nice. Um, there are eight modes. Try the classic rack chorus effect, which is the boss dimension D. Wow. Which is the famous tri chorus, isn't it? Yep. Is it? I yeah. think so. So what that so what that means, the let's say about tri chorus, is talking about having more than one delay line. Uh, so we talked about it before that the way you get that modulation in a, in a traditional sense of the chorus is having a delayed signal and that you modulate the delay time and that gives you the up and down pitch modulation. And in a tri-chorus, in the, in the dimension chorus, there's more than one of those lines. So you get multiple uh, modulating um, frequency with a, a, alongside your direct signal. So let's hear it, Daniel. What does that say? That says mix. Mix. Okay, sorry, I can't see from here. Imagine if you could have two of those in, in parallel, Dan. Mm -hmm. 
Right, I turned the knob then and we went from um, two in parallel to two in series. Okay. Now we're going to go to try to vibe, which is try chorus and try vibrato. Ooh, for a complex sound. <laughs> Lush. That is killer. Now yep. we're going to go for low frequency tri chorus and high frequency tri vibrato. Okay. So we'll stay where we were and then I'll change it mid, mid play. Okay, next next mode, high low detune. So this is a harmonic detune. Low frequency detune and a high frequency tri chorus. Okay. Great with distortion apparently, so we'll try that part of the way through. Clean again a sec. Uh, where were we there? I think that was the harmonic detune, wasn't it? Um, hopefully there are only two more. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. <laughs> okay. oh, there's two. There's two different harmonic detunes. Though, isn't okay, there? so the first, uh, we're going to start at the end, which is tri chorus and echo. <laughs> Trying to find the delay time. The delay time is on the tone knob for that mode. Okay. Uh, and then we'll come back to, uh, this is the tri-chorus and detune for that ultimate classic uh, rack tone. <laughs> And finally, the high-low detune, harmonic detune, low-frequency detune, and a high-frequency tri-chorus. I think that might might have been what we had in the first place. Can't remember. Here you go. It's the only one we haven't heard yet. <laughs>
Um, that is really astonishingly good. Two things I really love about it. Yep. One is uh, analog dry through and you just mix the effect in on top. Perfect. Thanks to the top left knob there. Perfect. Second is the you can have global uh, tone control of, so it can be really shimmery and really kind of oh, right. yeah. beautiful or it can be, you know, sat back there a bit and that is killer. Mm. And apologies if this is not the current version, if the new version looks different. Um, I've seen pictures of different graphics. I'll say that just one final time. Blimey, O'Reilly, though, it sounds good. It really does. Really does. Yeah, yeah. My brain's whirring. Yeah? Mm. Good. Yeah. Do you know what my favourite sandwich is? No. Whit jamming. <laughs>